Hello everybody, my name is Petr Koutny and today I have for you another brilliant chess game and up to me this is one of the best chess game ever and I'm happy to show this game why this game is such exciting and immortal and the answer is because with black pieces this game played Bobby Fischer, Robert James Fischer and maybe we have the question what's the secret of Bobby Fischer and the answer is absolutely hidden in moves coming from this game because you will see how Bobby Fischer played with his pieces, how Bobby Fischer was working with his pieces and that's the reason why too many people believe that Bobby Fischer is one of the greatest chess player in chess history and up to me he is the greatest one. So let's watch this game till end, let's enjoy this amazing chess game and let's learn lots of Bobby Fischer's moves. Because chess mastery, chess improvements and chess beauty is waiting for you. With white pieces this game played Vlastimil Hort and Vlastimil Hort is one of the famous and strongest and greatest Czech chess player in chess Czech history. So he's not weak chess player at all. He used to be one of the strongest chess players at the uh, second half of the 20th, 20th century and you know that's the reason that uh, Bobby Fischer has to show something extra and he will. So with white pieces this game played Vlastimil Hort, with black pieces this game played Robert James Fischer 1970 and after short castle let's see that white's got slight advantage and black is a little bit more passive. Now it's good to follow this position and now it's good to remember this position because different between white's and black pieces it's maybe giving white advantage, but you will see after next 10 or 20 moves, different story. Black is going to outplay white and mainly he will outplay him because he will improve his position to maximum. Say he will improve power of his pieces to maximum and that's something what is good to remember that our pieces are the most important friends in our chess game and it's good to support our pieces because one day our pieces will support us. So bishop e3 and um, queen a5 I will tell you something in front before you will see square c4 is the most important square and you know you have to be chess genius to understand why but you don't need to be chess genius and you can be better chess player if you are going to watch this game till end and maybe you will understand how Bobby Fischer played his chess. So Queen a5 and Bishop d2 what's happened? Happened only that uh, Bishop on e3 used to be stronger than Bishop on d2 and Bobby Fischer is smiling how white maybe <laughs> maybe he was doing a bad job with this bishop because bishop on e3 is a stronger bishop on d2 is doing nothing exactly uh, queen b1 and now knight d4 let's watch this knight this knight in the center is doing amazing job and of course black is not going to win this game because of this knight but uh, black is starting to outplaying white because of this knight this is a beautiful knight and the strongest black piece. No one from white's pieces has a chance to, to be strong as this black's knight. And step by step, piece by piece and move by move, black is going to outplay white because his pieces are going to find a hidden power. His pieces are going to be improved to maximum and you will see that that's not a secret of Bobby Fischer. That's a secret of great chess players. Great chess players every time believe in their pieces. And a5 happened, knight c6 and of course what is doing knight on e7? Nothing. And what is doing knight on uh, e5? Everything. So yes. Uh, 
It's good to find your worst placed piece and do your best to find the best squares. And you know, it's not only about the knight on e5, it's maybe everything about weak square on f3. Okay, if you don't see a weakness on f3, you can see that a knight on e7 is a bad knight. And knight on e5 is a great knight, and everything between. It's only, it's only chess understanding and chess chances waiting for you. So knight c6, of course, and now c4. What a beautiful move! You know, c4 is one of the most important square for a black, and he know it. So c4 happened, and now knight e5, and for a black. It's easy to play this position, for white it's really hard to play move b3, because in case uh, white is going to take care about his extra pawn, he is losing peace and he is losing game, because two great knights in the center, here exactly in our variation, are going to win this game. Check on F3 once, second, and thank you very much for peace and game and fork and everything. And that's happened because of great placed knights. You know, you don't need to see all this variation till end, but you have to see that strong pieces are doing a good job. So Bishop E3 happened and okay. Thank you very much for his pawn, knight on c4 and knight on d4. Both knights are doing a great job. And now let's see how these two knights are strong. If I'm going to put every arrow where this knight should go, you will see that nearly all chessboards, all important squares are under black's knight's control. And that's exactly the reason why I believe that a strong piece are doing a good job and these two knights are doing an amazing job and if we coming back, for example, position after short castle, just remember this position. No reason believe that black is going to outplay white's army and white has got all good cards in his hands to improve his position but since now say till now we see the different different between Robert James Fisher and the rest of the world he knows where to place his pieces he knows how strong pieces are doing a great job and he knows that this is the best way how to be strong chess player and we know that that is the best way how to play chess. It's not hard to play chess as Bobby Fischer. It's a simple, just follow your pieces, follow your dreams, follow your squares and be better chess player. Okay, what's happened now? Rook a4 and rook c8. It's a funny that maybe somebody will play rook f8, but there is a question, what is doing this rook on a8? Play chess like Bobby Fischer and never ever uh, leave your pieces without job. So for this reason, rook a c8 was the move of Bobby Fischer. Exchange, exchange, why not? And now bishop f6 happened. You know, it's interesting that maybe it's not bad at all to play bishop a7 and to keep a bishop on a7 diagonal but Bobby Fischer decided to go to f6. Maybe he believed that uh, Pressure to pawn on b2, it's much more important than pressure to pawn on f2. And c3, bishop d8, okay, <laughs> beautiful, maybe, <laughs> maneuver of this bishop, b4, and now Bobby Fischer is going to change his mind. His bishop is coming back to work, and even Bobby Fischer maybe was wasting two moves with his bishop, Finally, he found it the best square for him. It's good to remember that our pieces are strong if they are attacking upon their weaknesses and without any doubt. Pawn on c3 is a weak square, weak pawn and that's a target. And if we know where our opponent is weak and where we have a target, 
we have a plan. And after rook e1 and rook d8, let's watch this position. Okay. All black pieces are doing a good job. I think that nearly all black pieces are on the best squares. And without any doubt, black's got a beautiful advantage. And I think that since short castle position till now, black outplayed white species, white player and got nearly winning advantage. You know, still he is not winning, but that's a good position for him and I'm sure that black's got advantage. One more time, since now, where this position maybe is unclear and maybe white's got slight edge till this position where we saw two beautiful knights c4 and d4 doing a great job till maybe here where we understand that uh, since last and say 12 moves everything change and bobby fisher need only 12 moves to outplay his opponent and uh, that's not a secret that's a power of good or well placed pieces and everyone from Black's army is doing a good job. That's something what we could remember. That's something what we could study. And it's not hard to play like Bobby Fischer. Of course, it's good to follow him. And I think that that's exactly the best way how to play chess. Okay, now let's come back because I'm speaking and talking about this position and moves and pieces and maybe you are going to be tired. But if you're tired, let's have a break and let's press a like, let's press a follow and let's stay with me because next time I will show another beautiful chess game of maybe Bobby Fischer. So let's stay with me. Let's press follow, let's press a bell, let's press a like and let's watch this game till end. Because after rook a2, h4, h5, okay, uh, queen d7, nothing happened, knight e5, Bobby Fischer is still working with his pieces. Knight c4, maybe is jumping to knight g4, we have a check, why not? Is there and now uh, rook c7 this pawn is a target and of course maybe rook c8 and maybe queen a4 and maybe queen b3 and if this happened nearly all black pieces are attacking weakness yes that's exactly the secret of top chess players if they know what to attack they are going to attack with all pieces and exactly that's happened now bishop h3 uh, don't worry uh, black is not happy to exchange his knight so knight e5 and queen a4 knight c4 and you know this is nice offer and not good deal for white this knight is not for free because here is rook here is a pawn and what's more important this pawn in this variation in case why is taking knight on c4 is falling down don't believe me let's see this variation knight c4 exchange 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 thank you for pawn on to f2 let's come to defend pawn on f2 let's lose pawn on c4 b4 a5 and this position is lost for white so one more time maybe now i was faster so in case why is taking on c4 one, two, and everything is hanging. And maybe uh, pawn on f2 is important to make sure that white's king is not checkmating. So in this case, pawn on c3 is falling down, pawn on b4 is falling down, and everything is falling down. So <laughs> that's game over in this variation. And for this reason, uh, white played uh, rook a2 and queen c6, okay exchange exchange thank you thank you and after b5 um, you know this position is going to be simplified and uh, black is going to play winning end game so exchange take take 
And what is important after rook b6, that rook e4 is uh, giving uh, black hope for a strong pass pawn. And everybody knows that pass pawns are the most typical winning plans in the middle game and end game. And uh, maybe you think that, yes, of course, white's got pass pawn as well. But sometimes these pawn pawns are not strong if they are blocked. Okay, this pawn, this pass pawn will be blocked and will be weak. And just imagine, in case this pawn is not there, there are two connected pass pawns. And that's a winning plan. So, okay, now for black, it's important to stop this pass pawn or to not make him danger. So, look, Ivan is going now and uh, for white is hard to go over a7 square and if this pass pawn is not danger at the end black's pass pawn is getting to be danger so okay now let's improve a king let's do for one more time and let's go to d6 and what we saw we saw beautiful king's improvements. You know, um, Bobby Fischer, whole game is improving his pieces. He is not forgetting to king. He is remember that all pieces, even king in the end game, has to play and do good job. And you know, every times I I am watching this game, every times I am watching his positions, every times when I am watching this position. I have the feeling that Bobby Fischer is playing good game because he has good pieces and that's not a secret of Bobby Fischer. As I told you, that's a secret of good chess players. That's a secret of us. Think about our pieces and do your best. Of course, my friend, improve your pieces. Uh, okay, active, f6, e5, one day and Let's play this position faster. Two connected pass pawns. Hey, that's a super strong position, winning position and beautiful chance to remember something from this beautiful chess game. Don't tell that chess is a boring game because that's not true. Even this game has got everything, you know, peace improvements, activity, tactics, pass pawns um, and what I'm enjoying most is how Bobby Fischer played this game because he outplayed his strong opponent because of power of his strong pieces. You know, at the end, um, that's nothing to say. Maybe I'm going to show this game for one more time, maybe a little bit more faster. And you will see that there is only one secret of Bobby Fischer. Think about your pieces, improve your pieces to maximum and rest is easy. If you agree, let's watch this game for one more time. Think about move, think about every move and remember this game. Because this game should give you good chess understanding, how to play chess, how to play with pieces and why it's good to follow our YouTube chess channel. So let's watch for one more time.
So at the end of this game, thank you very much for your time, attention, likes and follows and I hope I'm going to see you here soon next time in another beautiful chess game. Take care. See you soon. Thank you very much. Bye bye.